I just shot this whole video and realized I didn't shoot it at all. So uh, hopefully this is twice as good second time around. Uh, I didn't start it like this the first time. What do you get when you take a K-Bar and a uh, Combat Classic sized fighting knife and you mix it with a Wingard wearable weapon? Uh, this is the Back Ripper by Wingard Wearables, a wearable EDCable fighting tomahawk. What do you get when you mix these two together? I'll tell you what you get. You get this. Uh, you get the Love Handle by Wingard Wearables. The Love Handle is the first knife from Zach Wingard and his really cool and unique company. Uh, all USA handmade uh, weapons of classical origin modernized for modern EDC carry. Um, this, as I said, is the first knife he's made. And the love handle is a really unique design. It's big, it's about as big as a K-Bar, but it fits the body uh, undercover in a way um, that this just wouldn't for me. Um, and it's all because of the curves. That's what Wingard Wearables is known for. These, here's a, another famous tomahawk by them, the Empress. You can see when you look at it in this aspect, this curve, this curve is to accommodate the curve of the body. When you slide this in the waistband and you have the, uh, the two Kydex sheath, uh, sheath things here clipped in, uh, you can carry this in there and pull it out and use it. I don't, I have it by my bed, but uh, still that bronze spontoon hawk will do some serious damage uh, to a mugger if you're carrying this with you, for instance, when you are mugged. And it's all due to that curve. It's the curve that makes it wearable. So the love handle uh, was a long time coming. He, uh, Zach Wingard, set out to make a knife uh, that would be, um, that would go with his brand and his philosophies of use. And uh, this is what he came up with, the love handle. Let me, let me read from this card, this info card that comes with every love handle. He says, the love handle is curved to the waistline for comfortable everyday carry. Inspired by traditional trailing point knives, your love handle is designed for utility cutting and combative capabilities. Strong tip for piercing, soft materials, trailing edge for drawing cut slicing and rocking cuts. Spine has hard corners as scraping surfaces. The love handle is guardless, so forceful, with forceful use, grip such that the hand completely surrounds the base of the handle to reduce grip of, uh, risk of slip. Uh, let's see, water jet cut in 80 CRV in Pennsylvania, hand treated, freehand ground and assembled in Tucson, Arizona by Tate Buzzard of the Norman Tactical, who makes some really cool knives. Zach uh, filed in the grooves in Ladenburg, Landenburg, PA, and it's uh, paper micarta on this full tang. Um, so you saw how, how I was carrying it. I like it here because... Uh, I'm more accustomed to carrying things either on the side, um, well, actually that's not true. The reason I like it here is because in the prescribed design, the way it's designed doesn't work for me, but I'll show you how this works for me. So for me personally, this, the curve, overall curve of the knife fits perfectly the curve of my body here. And then the handle is small and curved and does not protrude much. So when you have a shirt on or something like that, you don't see it, but you can easily draw it. And you have a seven inch knife. This is in Pakal. Uh, so you have that edge on the inside with this grip and the tip going right, right where it needs to go. With a regular back fist with this knife, you're gonna put the point uh, right where your fist would be because that curve accommodates the arcing motion of your hand. So really great, uh, great kind of uh, reverse reverse grip knife. All right, so it's right in there. You can just draw it right out. So another cool thing though, is that you can, I like it here, I can sit down with it. It's been, it's been in here the whole time, feels good. And then even the handle doesn't even poke out backward because of that curve. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, so this knife, if you uh, do any sort of knife training for martial arts or for fun or whatever, um, those are kind of one and the same, I guess. 
Uh, you might be used to doing a lot of this kind of stuff in, for Kali and that kind of thing. Just be careful with this knife because it is very curved. And if you're doing a lot of close to the body kind of manipulations, um, that point is pointing back at you a lot. But once you kind of get a feel for it, you can start making the curve work for you, especially with these sort of redondo motions. So you can draw this kind of like a scimitar too. And we, we pull this out. So over here, you can either draw it in that reverse grip or you can draw it kind of like uh, a samurai sword or a scimitar with the edge up. And as you draw it forward, you're already in a slicing kind of motion. Uh, but I gotta say, personally, I like this. I like it upside down with the edge up. You can either do a thrust and a heave ho, that sort of thing they were doing in the US military uh, in the World War II, or you can do this kind of pecking thing. Bang, bang. You could even do that sort of redondo on someone's forearm or the back of their hand with that super pointy but stout tip it's gonna gouge, it's gonna tear, it's gonna break bone, it's gonna be a very, very dangerous thing coming towards them. So yeah, ADC RV2, a very sharp edge. Um, I, I do know that um, Zach is considering maybe going with a thinner uh, overall stock or, um, or what do you call it? Uh, th grinding it thinner so it's a little slicier. In my opinion, uh, though my, my lens is, I like this as a weapon. I don't think of this much as a utility knife, though that's his primary use for it. You know, scraping in a camping situation. Of course, you'd want to do that and grab onto something. Scraping, carving. Um, to me, though, uh, you know, I love this kind of aspect. So let me show you what how it's originally meant to be carried. And, and uh, for me, it just doesn't work, but... For you, for Zach, it, for Zach it definitely works, and for many others, um, it might work for you too. So it ships with two discrete carry concept clips, and they're mounted like this. I uh, to removed one and switched it to the other side, but this is how it's designed to ride, sideways right in the waistband, and you're clipped in here, clip and clip. And there's some ranger bands to keep everything kind of where it's supposed to be. Um, it works, but for me, it's just uh, too long. I'm a little too narrow, I guess, right here in the hip. And and uh, it, it kind of pops out on both sides. I don't know if you can see this, but you can kind of you can kind of see right here, and then right here. It'd be cool. I'd I'd rather just wear it right on front. Uh, but uh, where I live, that wouldn't be acceptable. But so for me, this one doesn't quite work, but if you are, say, Zach's size, I guess he's a little bit bigger than I am. Uh, I, I, I'm pretty damn sure he's a tall, pretty tall guy. Um, and so his hips might be wider. He might have a bigger belly. It might, uh, but, but the point is this shape is perfect uh, if it fits. So like if you were to take this and scale it down by 10%, for me, it would be perfect. Uh, um, and for other people, it might be too small. So, you know, that kind of thing is neither here nor there. For me, uh, the beauty, whoa, the beauty is this curve, uh, the extreme curve. You can find, I was like, I know I can find a place on my body where that's going to fit perfectly. And uh, it was in my traditional uh, in the waistband at the three o'clock, or in this case, I've been liking it at the nine o'clock better. Yeah, I like this. I like this as a menacing weapon, as a tool. Um, and uh, yeah, you could do a lot with this. So this is the Wingard Wearables Love Handle. And uh, one more time, I want to show it with some of his other really exquisite stuff. This one I didn't show before. This is the Stingray Tomahawk. And it's, as you can see, a spike tomahawk. And it's optimized for throwing. <laughs> Uh, it's not, I, I am not optimized for throwing. As you can see, I, I sort of gashed, gashed it once and had an unsuccessful throw. And I was like, eh, I'll use my cold steels for that. Uh, but that's what this is built for, especially on a round target. I think it'd be great to throw into a tree. Um, so, um, beautifully done. He does all the hafts 
uh, on his tomahawks. And then, and then this is, uh, I don't remember what the steel is on this, um, but forged. And this is cast bronze, uh, silicone bronze, which is so cool on this. Uh, they all have hickory handles. This one is um, burned and impregnated with oil and uh, wax. This thing is wicked. It, it's got like a megalodon tooth there on one side and then this ripping sharp inner edge uh, kind of spike and then the back the handle is good for puño striking and then here is the uh, the um, back ripper this is probably my favorite it's light it's the longest but it's the lightest and fastest and it, I love the angle that the blade is presented it really accommodates your um, the arcing motions of your body, of your wrist, of your forearms and shoulders and such. And then you get that um, grabbing, pulling, sharp inner edge hooking, uh, grappling hook on the back. So really cool. And then if you mess it up, you just get a, a new haft and, uh, and replace it. But the way he hangs these, it's pretty, uh, pretty nicely done. They're not friction fit from the bottom. They're hung from the top with wedges. Uh, going crosswise beautifully done and so now this is his newest venture and uh, I hope I hope to see great success for him with this and I also hope to see him um, delve deeper into knifedom because you know I love knives um, but this thing is super sweet and thank you very much Zach for loaning this to me um, it is a true beauty and a really really cool and imaginative and practical first knife. All right, thanks for watching.